Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to March's Monthly Roundup. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Antoinette and I'm a board game reviewer and once a month I sit down and I make this video about the changes to my board game collection. So that includes um, new games that have come, some games that have gone, um, others that I've been playing or games maybe I've been you know, looking out for. Um, and I always think it's really, really fun as well if you, the viewers at home, want to tell me about you know, the stuff you've been enjoying because I always think there's good advice to be had about board games out there. Um, so yeah, so this video covers March. Um, and March is a strange month and not only because, you know, this is the second year running where we didn't get to have a St. Patrick's Day celebration here in Ireland. Um, but also because I just felt very burnt out on board games. So this is going to be a very unusual month. Um, now how this is um, segmented up is that I'll start by talking about the new things we got. Um, then that'll kind of lure, lure, lure itself um, into the section where I'll talk about the games we've been playing and then finally at the end I'll have a little bit of kind of personal chat if you want to know a little bit more about me and the channel and all that kind of stuff and if you want to stick it all the way out to there. Um, there are timestamps in this video so you can hop about through particular games um, but this is mostly going to be rambling because I've been very nervous about making this video. Um, so yeah, we'll just we're just gonna have to see where it goes and see where it takes me. And um, I'll do my best to try and be coherent and offer you some actual insights and advice on the games I've been looking at. All right, so let's hop right in at the very beginning with the first game that arrived this month. And my trusty phone tells me. So this was the expansion for It's a Wonderful World, which is called Corruption and Ascension. Um, now, it's not the only expansion we got for It's a Wonderful World. There is a kind of campaign expansion as well, but I've not played that yet. Um, but I'll start by talking about It's a Wonderful World, I guess, which is such an unusual title for a board game. Why is it so long and arduous? It sounds like a play rather than a game. Um, but what it is, um, if you break it down into its bare bones, is a tableau builder um, hand management game where you are trying to manage the cards you put out they will create resources and then you're going to want to use these resources to create further cards to get yourself victory points um put very basically like that it doesn't sound like you know a 10 tons of fun um but it is and it's very very clever and if you i think enjoy this kind of race for the galaxy style games i think that um this is a brilliant adjunct from those um, and what's pretty clever about it is how you gain your resources, right? Um, so you, there are five resources, let's hope I say this right, um, that you can acquire. And each round there will be a phase in which you acquire these resources. Um, and you can use them straight away on your cards as costs and things like that to be able to put more cards into play so that you can activate further abilities. Um, and so how these or they work, they work in an order. So that's the most fascinating part about it. So you're going to get grey cubes before you get black cubes and you're going to get black cubes before you get green cubes. So you can plan out your turn in such a way that if I get the grey cube now, that will build this thing, which will get me green cubes later. Um, and that's the fun bit. <laughs> um, we really, 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 really like it. It's quick to play. Um, the art is beautiful for a game that has a ton of cards. You know, you don't normally expect a lot. It's a really good looking game. It's really kind of retro, sci-fi, futuristic. I think it has a theme. I'm not entirely certain to be fair. Um, but yeah, we're big fans of it in our house. So when we heard there was an expansion coming out, well, we had to go and keep our eyes on that. So this expansion is one of those dregs that's left over from last month where we had an expansion month and, and acquired only expansions. There are at least two that didn't make it till this month. So, you know, it's all bleeding in there. But this um, new expansion, Ascension and Corruption, basically has two different sets of cards in it. Um, the Ascension one just kind of has bigger, more expensive cards, you know, that you'll require may way more resources and stuff to make, but they'll do cool things. The Corruption cards were the ones I really had a problem with. Um, because normally your cards, you know, will say this card will cost three grey and two black and then it's going to make two grey and a black after that for you. Um, and it'll do that the whole game as long as it's sitting down in your tableau, right? So it kind of makes sense you're paying one thing to be able to make another. Um, these new cards for the corruption set were basically like, um, you know, you can have three black, but you can, you know, you'll always get one less green from now on. Um, and I hated the notion that they would remove the ability to acquire particular colors. 
Um, like straight up, I was just mad <laughs> when we played it first. I was like, that can't be right. It can't be fair. Um, now they are heavily costed, right? Like, but it, but basically, what it meant to me was that by providing you with the ability to cut out particular colors for you to acquire, it basically meant that you had to knew, know what you were playing already or what strategy you were building towards. And I never know that for a number of rounds because you know the cards you get to decide what goes out on the table are random. Um, you can draft them, by the way. Um, I'd probably recommend that if there wasn't, if there was more than two of you, we just get too lazy to draft the two of us. Um, and so I just, I felt like those cards didn't really fit in with everything else we were doing. But that's just me. I think I just had a bit of a hang up about it rather than the cards were actually bad. My husband managed to use them rather successfully, but I was just like, uh, 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 don't like this stuff. Um, but I, I did enjoy the expansion, I think, overall. I just love adding a bit of freshness, some new cards, some new corporations to run. All good kind of things. So yeah, so that's my take on It's a Wonderful World. Corruption and Extension Expansion. Right, so the second game that's on our acquired list this month is Ginkopolis or Ginkopolis or I don't know how you're supposed to really pronounce it. It's spelled Ginkopolis but that sounds weird out loud. Um, and maybe you've heard of this game before because it's a fairly popular one um, and one that's been out of print for a while so it was you know quite a, had, had quite a hefty price tag. Um, but we had it on our wish list for some time because every so often it popped up when people talked about how great um, Ginkgo Polis was. Or I'm going to call it Ginkgo Polis. I think we're just going to have to settle on something. Um, and so it was on our wish list, but the reprint has recently come from Pearl Games. Um, and we managed to spot that while picking up the It's a Wonderful World expansion. So I've ended up with um, Ginkgo Polis. Um, so for those of you unfamiliar and possibly also myself, um, this is a very fascinating game, which really does a little bit of everything. And what it's about is building a city. Or a bit, um, yeah, and this is all done in tiles out on a board. Um, and how this will happen is that you're going to claim parts of the city by building on it. And you do this through a deck of cards. Now, the cards have multiple uses. So some of them will let you add a new area to the building places. Some of them will allow you to build on top of other buildings. So you can put out like further of your own markers to claim zones. Um, some will get you resources and things like that. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff like this going on. So it's area control meets hand management. Um, meets, I don't know, I've not really played anything quite like it. And despite it seeming simplistic, there's definitely a lot going on here. Um, and a lot of back and forth between you and your opponents. At two players, I found it particularly kind of, don't want to say vicious, but certainly mean. Because you are fighting for control of coloured zones on the board. And you can replace each other's um, kind of buildings so that you lose your influence while they will gain theirs. Um, it's a very well put together game and super clever. Um, I'm not sure how well it fits the two of us, um, but I can see the kind of people that will really enjoy this, especially if you like a bit of competition with your opponents or you love that interactivity. This has got all of that. Um, but overall, like I think it's so, I don't know, I think it's quite interesting. It's a very well put together game. I'm still not entirely certain if we'll keep it because I like the idea of it. And I didn't mind it while I played it. It actually doesn't even take that long to play. It's like a 40 minute to an hour game. Um, and it's got a lot going for it. I just, I don't know, I think us playing it, hmm, I'm not sure how well it fits. Um, but I think it's definitely a very solid game. Um, so have you played um, Ginkopolis before? Have you tried it out? What do you think? How would you describe it? I find it very hard to describe because it, it really does so many different things, but does them all incredibly well. Um, so yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Next up is a game that was very, very, very popular before Christmas. Then went out of print, nobody could find a copy, and then it's come back into print again. Um, and this is The Red Cathedral. Um, and this is a game about, well, yes, building a cathedral. Um, and how it does it is that you're getting resources from a roundel in a kind of a dice management system. And you're using it to buy items and equipment to be able to upgrade parts of this tower. And then you score points for the zones of the, the cathedral that, you know, you have built um, and whatnot or decorated. 
Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what it's about. Um, this one is very interesting. It comes in a very small box, um, which I'm not sure whether I liked or not. It's definitely a very compact game. Um, I enjoyed the roundel aspect of it because I do love a good roundel and there's some clever things done with the dice there um, that your dice can only move as far around the roundel as the number of pips on them so you're trying to figure out how to land on the spot you want as you go around. Um, I like that. Um, and the building of the cathedral itself is essentially a race because the game ends once the last piece has been built. Um, and you're going to want to have majorities. It's built in like three rows, like upright rows, um, and so you're going to want to have majorities in those. Um, for us, I suppose, actually, I guess I thought it ran a little bit long. Now, that might be yet again a two player only issue. Um, I felt like the game dragged a little bit towards the end. While I like the mechanics and things of it, um, and I do think it's quite a sweet game, um, I don't know, it just it didn't really kind of, I don't know ignite a fire inside me does that make sense like I wasn't going oh, I can't wait to play this again um I think it's a very good looking game actually the roundel board is beautiful it's absolutely lovely but everything else was fairly um simplistic and straightforward and I do think that's actually its charm my main issue is that it's a 40 minute to maybe an hour game and there are so many other games in that slot to compete with that I was finding it hard to imagine where this would fit in. Um, I do think though it's good and I think it's definitely going to suit kind of the, the right player group. Maybe the more people you have I think the more interesting it might be because that will affect how that roundel works and how quickly the game ends, maybe how number of, you know, the number of players you have. Uh, and of course then the difficulties in getting the resources you want because well there's more players around. Um, so I think I can see it being much more interactive and possibly more fun with more than just two. Um, overall though I think it's a good game, I think it's fine, I just don't think it's going to, I don't think we're keeping it, I don't think it'll hold on to uh, or take over a spot in the collection from something else. Um, right, so next stop. Um, oh yes, okay, so this yet again the final continuation from um, Expansion Month and this is Argent the Consortium Summer Break um, and I've officially talked about um, Argent the Consortium um, for the past three months on the trot now um, in every one of these because we keep picking up the small expansions. Um, I'm sure this will be the end of it soon. Um, so the Summer Break expansion for Argent which is the, the game about um, basically being a, a wizard um, in a wizarding school and trying to veto the people in power for you to be the next chancellor. Um, it's really really fun, we really liked it, hence all the expansion purchases because um, we don't normally go there. But the Summer Break expansion is a very small one, it's a couple of cards and things like that and it basically has different events happen for you and the characters are kind of dressed in their summer outfits and stuff like that. Um, I'm disappointed it's a little pervy for my liking. Um, but it did add something kind of fun to the game. So it's just, you know, it's one of those small things. I don't think it's, it's not hugely game changing. But also it just gave you some additional things to add to the game to just add some variety. So hence why it's there. So there's that. All right, so that's all the games we've bought. <laughs> um, I have received two Kickstarter review copies that I'm interested in talking to you about because um, I'm working my way through those at the moment. Um, the first is Arcosa from Toon Hammer Games. And I love, love, love the art on this game. I think that that's why it was so appealing to me. And it's a sci-fi kind of game which it reminds me so much of like Mad Max meets Waterworld. It's a game in which you are on an alien planet living in a bunker and there's come a chance for you and for those in your colony to be able to leave this planet but only if your bunker is the best one. Um, so it's up to you to add different rooms to it to keep your people happy with the right kind of environment with food and water and you go out and you explore kind of the wastes and see what happens. Um, it's a game with a lot of theme to it and I'm not normally a theme person but I really like this one. I found it really interesting and strange um, and all kind of the cool things that might happen to you while you're out you know trying to get new colonists and things in the desert. 
Um, overall, I'm liking it a lot so far, and I think if you want something kind of unique and sci-fi, um, this is definitely that. Um, I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it from me soon, but keep your eyes peeled for it. I think it's coming um, in June, I want to say. I'll put it on the bottom of the board. It's, it's coming in the summer of, of this year. Um, the second thing on my agenda that has arrived is the Pilfering Pandas game from Ren Games. And as some of you know, um, I'm Ren Games social media manager, um, so I will not be reviewing this title. Um, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it since it showed up anyway. Um, so Pilfering Pandas is a game about pandas trying to escape the zoo um, and avoiding the zookeeper so that they can escape. It's in a traditional kind of card game. If you, you know, if you played a lot of games with a regular deck of cards, I think this is definitely right up your street. Um, with some really nice art, some very nice little twists. Um, and it's quick and fun and easy and, oh, it's beautiful because I've been, you know, showing off pieces of its art for a while. And it's coming to Kickstarter on the 19th of May. Um, so you might want to check out some of the social media places there to see more beautiful art, hear more about the project, um, maybe get to know it a little bit better. But yeah, it's going, it's going good. Um, I love how it's all turning out and I can't wait to see the finished um, project. So yeah, you'll see some pictures from me of that as well. Um, now, finally in the purchases, I'm adding in a section here that I wouldn't normally have added. And this is Kickstarter games we've backed. Now this is unusual because we very rarely back things on Kickstarter. Um, but of course everything happened at once this year and all the good Kickstarters seem to arrive at the same time. So the first thing we've backed on Kickstarter is the new Root expansion. Um, as you may have noticed I've been waxing lyrical about Root lately. Um, I'm becoming a rather large fan of the game and it would be lovely to finish out our shelf with one more box. Um, so that has come up. Um, I wonder if have any of you also backed it? Um, there are a lot of Root fans out there, right? I'm just, I'm just new to the party. Um, the second thing I backed that was on Kickstarter this month, and of course, as I said, they came together, is Aeon's End. Um, so Aeon's End is a cooperative card game and a damn fine one at that. And it has a new expansion out. It seems to put a new expansion out every year. Um, which was available through Kickstarter um, and so we kind of we wanted to back that. If anything actually I wanted to also you were able to purchase some of the older um, expansions and I would really have loved to got some of those only the pricing for them was crazy as in the shipping was nearly more than the game itself so that was a little bit sad but um, at least we'll get the new new stuff to do. Um, has anyone played Aeon's End? Is anyone as big a fan of it as I am? It is so, such a such a good game. It's a it's a deck building game where you're kind of doing your own thing, but you're also working together. And it's one of those ones where it's very hard for someone else to boss you around while playing it because you're both kind of working on the, the same things um, while also drafting a deck and building cards. And it's one of the first games I remember that there are lots of female characters to play, so I always think that's cool. There's just lots of characters in general and lots to it, and I really, really like it. So um, if you haven't checked out Aeon's End, it's definitely worth doing so. So yeah, so that is all the purchases. I was going to say, we didn't make that many purchases this month, but it always adds up to be slightly longer than I had intended. I guess that's the nature of obsession. Um, cool. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you've been, well, what you've picked up, if anything. Has there been any bargains or things I've missed? Um, or anything on Kickstarter I should have been looking at. This is all new, this is all new to me. I'm not used to this Kickstarter thing. Right, let's pop on to the next section where I'll tell you about the games I've played. So the games being played this month is short because most of those games we've played were in fact the games that were new that I've already discussed with you in the first section. Um, the only thing I suppose I like to add in here is to do with Argon the Consortium. And I played it with the Mansers expansion as well as the summer break expansion there we go and um, for one big extravaganza of game um, and they worked really nicely together um, my only issue is that there are different color back cards for the different expansions which is ah, which actually mattered a bit as in you could really see them when you stack the cards which ones were from different expansions meaning i'm going to have to sleeve the whole game now at this point um, but what all of the expansions kind of brought together is just a lot of variety to the game because 
you now have more rooms you can place out on the board you've now um, different ways to kind of influence those votes so you can do different things through different spells and the monsters expansion brought a new color wizard Woo! Um, and whatnot and the only thing that actually disappointed me a bit is that so when you're moving around the board you have different color wizards and they have special abilities depending on what color they are and these are dictated to or informed by a row of cards that are set out on the table so there'll be a red a green you know that kind of thing and they'll tell you what they do now these cards are two-sided so it's random which side goes down which time so that your wizards don't always do the exact same thing I would love to have seen more of those cards to add more variety to what the different colour wizards could do. That's the only thing that didn't come in the expansions that I really wish it would have. It would have been very cool to have a different option because you, you get to know them fairly quickly. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we had a lot of fun with it. I think the game is just fun anyway and just having more options didn't like detract from it or anything like that. It just gave you more of the good stuff you usually want. So yeah, so that, that was pretty good. Um, the second thing I've been playing um, and isn't necessarily a board game but it is a tabletop game and I mentioned it at the end of last month's monthly roundup which was that I was kind of having a longing to play something tabletop gamesy something war gamey perhaps um, because it's something we used to play a lot of um, and so in the space of the past month where I had this notion um, I have acquired some War Machine um, models to go and play games with. Now, for those of you who are uninformed or maybe un uninterested might be a better phrase because it's not exactly a board game, but hey, um, it's a war game so it has to count for something. War Machine is a game in which you are the head of an army. You have a particular leader. Each leader or each army or faction, whatever, has its own kind of special shtick about the kind of stuff it will do. And it's set in kind of a steampunk magical world. Um, and so you will have a leader for your army and they will have a particular set of spells because, you know, there's magic. Um, and all of your units and men and infantry and things like that will all have special abilities um, to interact with each other. Um, the cool thing about this is that your leader um, will have a special, you know, well they call it a feat or a special bonus thing that they can do once per game and most of the game is spent kind of um, trying to basically line things up to get the perfect turn. Um, it is scenario based, you can play it that way so somebody can try and get enough points by holding flags and stuff um, but you can also just kill your opponent's caster if at all plausible. Um, and there's something about the type of puzzle it provides that I find really intriguing because it's an interactive puzzle it's one that's changing all of the time from turn to turn and sure sometimes I freeze and I'm not sure what I should do next but sometimes you just you put together a harebrained scheme and it just works um, so it does involve rolling um, quite a bit of dice, all of the abilities are done by rolling dice but there's loads of ways to kind of mitigate those or determine roughly how they might turn out. Um, I'm having a lot of fun playing, my faction is the undead faction, I play Crix um, and that's been really fun as well and of course then you can paint miniatures too so I've been trying that out as well. And it seems like it's a marvellous time to try War Machine because it's stupid cheap at the minute seems like a lot of people um you know are selling their stuff second hand there was a time when it was very very popular so it's kind of it's interesting to see now how everything is so cheap so we've picked up a bunch of stuff for i don't know pretty much pittance um and the rules and things have changed since we last played so it's all a little bit new and different but it's definitely like the new hotness in our house at the moment but yeah it's been really really fun i think it's such a, a good game to be honest i think it's just very well put together and if that kind of thing maybe is up your street um, I recommend checking it out because normally games with miniatures like you know Warhammer 40k can be quite expensive so it's very refreshing to find miniatures that are relatively cheap um, so that you can just try things out and see how they go especially if you're checking secondhand places like we are like Facebook groups and eBay and things like that um, so yeah, if you ever thought that might be your jam, this is definitely, I think, a good time to look into it all and see what you think. Um, it's fascinating stuff and it's really, really... <laughs> no, it's that low. Of course it is fun. Um, it's interesting, but it burns my brain to no end a lot of the time. But yeah, different types of puzzles, I suppose, for different types of folks. Um, so yeah, so that's been fun. Um, 
Right, so as you can tell, I didn't play a whole ton of games this month. And if you'd like to know why, you can come and follow me to like the bit where I tell you things in the other bit. So now that we've got all those kind of formalities out of the way, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> no, of course the games are just as much a part of me as everything else is, but it's been a, a strange old month um, because at the end of last month I said I needed a bit of a break. I needed to tone down what I was doing, um, which is feeling a bit burnt out because when games are your everything, um, there's nowhere else to hide. <laughs> So um, of course, you know, I, I still love my board games, but I needed a needed a bit of a, a break. And I found it very, very difficult to do. Um, like the first week or two of this month, I was busy with um, Kickstarter previews and things like that. I, I hope you liked the one for Dungeon Date. It was kind of fun to do. Um, and then I really kind of stopped putting out content altogether. Um, and I was like, I need, I need a break here. But the problem being now that the longer I'm away from doing this, the harder it is to get back here. So making this video today was really, really hard. You don't want to know how much pumping up of myself I've had to do to get here to be able to sit in front of the camera. And it's funny how you think that, you know, if you take a break from something and come back to it, you'll feel refreshed, that it won't be a chore. Um, if anything, this has been so insanely, crazily difficult. And I'm not entirely sure why. I'm, I'm not sure if I need more of a break than I think I've done or it was crazy of me to stop in the first place. Because I don't think you realise how much stuff you do till you stop doing it. You know the kind of way I, I just... I kept wanting to grab up my phone or check something on the internet or put something together or... And it was very strange, or it is very strange, not to have all of that. Um, so I'm hoping I'm getting a bit of a boost at the minute with some review copies arriving because, you know, no matter how kind of unwell I may or may not be, I will always get done what I said I will get done without, if I have to drag myself kicking or screaming there, it'll get done. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of trying to get back into things gradually. Um, and I want to know, have you guys ever been burnt out? Have you ever just gone, I've had enough games for now? Um, I need a break and done something else because um, that seems to be what I'm trying to do a little bit with the whole you know um, wargaming thing um, and that is a nice break it's nice to bury yourself in something else for a little while um, but board games always have a special place in my heart and it's very strange to feel kind of so detached from them when you're normally so I don't know in tune with it all um, so yeah this month has been very strange um, I'm trying to figure out how to get back in the wagon. I hope this is part of that. We can only pray um, and whatnot. And then there's part of me that goes, you know what, you shouldn't feel bad for having to take a break for a bit. Um, you know, people take breaks from things all of the time. Um, why would I be any different? Um, I'm probably just rambling now at this point. <laughs> what I will point out is that you should check out the latest edition of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast. Um, it's a really, really special one and a really heartfelt one where myself and Oliver talk about kind of what board games mean to us in our lives. So it's a little bit different than the usual fanfare where we have some kind of topic. It's very much just us talking about things and games and how it all works. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's probably one of my most favourite episodes. So you can check that out on any of your, your podcasts and platforms. Um, would be really, really cool. And otherwise, I suppose, yeah, I'm trying to get my act together for next month. Because, um, you know, there are more things to do and more things to see. Um, and lots of, well, hopefully I can get back at the old games. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. I hope you're all well and keeping well. Um, maybe some of you have even been vaccinated by now. How cool is that? Um, maybe the world's going to right itself again. And I hear here in Ireland that we're going to be easing restrictions in a little bit. So maybe that'll give me a little bit of hope. That'd be great. Um, and otherwise, I'm sure I'll see you all around again soon. All right. Until next month, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.